I am Dragon. Um, I see in chat we've been told that they can hear music, but they couldn't hear Lunar Wolf, so hopefully they'll tell me. Okay, they can hear me. That might just be a volume or a routing thing then. Hello, I'm Dragon. Um, I play Ari A, an Asimir Ranger. Um, she is really badly shaken, actually, by the finale of season one. Um, there was a lot of there was a lot of fire and confusion and danger. <laughs> Sounds like someone has an impatient taxi nearby. I think that uh, might be me. Um, yeah, so she's she's a bit unsettled and perturbed um, and doesn't necessarily see much point in remaining in this village for much longer. It's like we might have exhausted everything that we could usefully do. That's probably reasonable. And hello, chat. You can hear me now. Um, okay. It's Silic. Hello. <coughs> I'm Eden. My character is Silic. He is a tall paladin. And, uh, yeah. Equally, I think after previous events and everything that's happened so far, crises of faith and various ongoings, deities beyond our ken, He's, uh, yeah, ready to move on as well, and probably feeling a little bit, not necessarily world-weary, I suppose, because it's probably not been long enough to feel that way, but he's on the path to that. I think that's perfectly fair for Silic. He's had a few things to worry about. Jack? Hi, I'm Amy. I play Jack. He is our little gnome thief. Um... Jack's thoughts about this village since they got here is that it's been a bit strange and now with the fire and everything he's quite happy to leave because he thinks there's something foul afoot. It's probably about spot on. And welcoming to the cast we have Malik Sire. Hi there, uh, I'm Ian, and I'll be playing Malixire, who's a tiefling divine soul sorcerer who is currently trying to figure out his place in the grander world of uh, Verlassen. So, we ended Season 1 with the destruction of the Roundhouse at Greydale in a suspicious explosion in which we presume Valley Zim was killed. This leaves Raydale without a representative, and it leaves our party without guidance as to what they should be doing next. Having made their best efforts to deal with the fire and it, uh, run a brief investigation to make sure no one was immediately injured that they could find, the party retired to bed to try and get some sleep for the balance of the night and deal with it in the morning. And so we awaken. Uh, Silic is doing his usual thing on the floor and so he pops up. And um, <laughs> oh, I suppose I should explain because you weren't necessarily hearing. And, um, Silic Sleeps with his arms and legs and head popped into a shell because he's a tall. Um, so yeah, he well, kind of makes sense. pops out in a, in a slightly <laughs> silly way, I suppose. Um, but <laughs> he gets up, um, looks around the room. Who else is roused at this point, if anybody? Um, so you can see that Ari R and Jack are both stirring. Uh, Kuji is sitting awake. Watching you, uh, what watching you rouse yourselves, uh, and notable is the absence of Timidar. Well, well, I wonder where he is. Um, can I try the door and just pop my head out and just look down the corridor and kind of look around for signs of movement, like maybe he's gone to the bathroom or something. Yeah, the door opens perfectly fine. It's 
into more than enough that it's been uh, it's been released. Um, you yes. can't see any indication of Timidar around. Um, Choose your pipes. Are you looking for for Timidar? Yes. Is he at breakfast? No, he 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 went he went out of the window. Maybe <laughs> two of two two hours ago. Hmm. Strangest thing. I wonder why. Uh, he he said he was going to Spiris. Spiris. Yes, yes. Sp but he he was looking for help. But he gave me this for you because he is going away and he doesn't know when he'll be back. And she oh. pull pulls from the side of the bed. Um, there's the wand that he acquired recently. Well, that's that's useful. Um, we still don't know how th how this is all linked together. Yes, there's a lot of questions to be answered. Tunnels beneath the roundhouse and the explosion, and well, yeah. Now Temadar running away. Well, who knows what's going on? We should, we should maybe go and find another circle member because it's a bit confusing. This is all a bit out of our pay grade, I think. Well, at the very least, we'll need to find another roundhouse level representative and let them know that Gradial currently, I mean, at this point, we don't even know if Alison is was in the roundhouse during the fire, or if they escaped, or or if Alison knew much about any of the tunnels, even because we weren't entirely sure that we could trust them about that. Hmm. But maybe we I... just report that she's missing. Yeah. And there was an accident at the house and the village is a little bit some the, the representation need... would be neat yeah I think they need someone who can give them better answers than recruits who are not far into their loop fresh greenies yeah yes yeah, it's true well fine idea well I suggest we have breakfast and then uh, move along we can ask the uh, the inn owner where the next village with the roundhouse is. Yes, a prudent plan. Maybe you should ask him to write a letter as well from the village. I mean... You know how they, like... We could do. I don't think he'll be very happy about it. Could ask him if he says no. Give it a try. Okay. Okay. So you're going down for breakfast? Yes. Okay. Uh, as you enter the bar room, uh, you notice on the far side, sat having some breakfast themselves, an unfamiliar figure sat with their back to you, wearing robes that are clearly marked with the symbol of the circle. They've got crimson skin and pitch black hair. They look like Thanks. they are dusty from the road. They Seems could... like luck might be on our side. There's a member of the circle right over there. How could they have got here so quickly? Well, no, no time like the present to ask. Okay. You my guest? And in characteristic fashion, he kind of strides over confidently and with all the charisma he can muster. Says, oh, good morning there, a fellow circle member. Fantastic to meet you. Jack's going to wait till... Ah, uh, blessings of Armand upon you. Very nice to meet you. Uh, oh. I'm Malik, sir. Would you care to join me for some breakfast? Sure. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes, we're very curious to know what uh, what brings you here. Oh, Are you um, on your loop? I've 
just uh, just been sent to help out with the uh, the explosion. I heard there was something happened. I'm not really sure. Ah, oh, yes, a terrible thing. Whole place went up. We're not quite sure what what happened ourselves. Oh, there's a big okay. bang. That's a bit a that bit disappointing, but hopefully we can have a look and see if we can get to the bottom of it. Um, I'm here to help out with healing and any other way that I can help. Oh, well, it'll be good to have you around. Good. So we have no idea what caused this explosion then? It was pitch black and nobody was keeping an eye on the roundhouse. But mm. you would think you would need to All keep right. an eye well, on the roundhouse. Well, I suppose yeah. one... I suppose once I've uh, had a look around, see if there's anyone I can heal or anything I can do there, we can maybe have a bit of an investigation, see if we can't uh, get to the bottom of this. We were lo looking to maybe move out all out of town, but I suppose if you're here to uh, do that, well, what are you doing after the investigation? Hmm. That all depends. Uh, I'm not 100% sure as to where I'm... Where I'm heading. Uh, I've recently finished my loop, so I'm just kind of killing time until I figure out exactly where it is I'm headed. So, who knows? Maybe I'll join you for a while. Oh, very interesting. And he looks at the yeah, rest of the group. Parking up kind of... is like stories. You you <laughs> finished your loop. How was it? While they're doing this, Aria is just kind of keeping an eye on Kuji. Just to make sure that Kuji's feeling okay, isn't too freaked out by having a stranger with us. Kuji is a sneaking the occasional glance at Malak's eye because his colouring is so very unusual to her, mm. um, especially at at that scale. You know, it's one one thing to uh, one one thing to have other other rather smaller. Uh, persons around who uh, who were a, vari a variety of uh, colours, um, but there's something a lot more imposing about Malik's eye from her point of view. In much the same way, in fairness, that Timidar was very imposing to her. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. But you know, Timidar didn't give off much. Um... Presence warmth. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly the cheeriest of chappies, indeed. As long as Jack Kuji is, is comfortable, it's all fine. <laughs> yeah, Jack's just gonna like maybe slightly harass uh, Malagaza um, with like questions about his like loop and that. Did you, did you find monsters? Did you find any monsters? I'm not sure Malik I heard you, Jack. No, I was going to say, I seem to be having an issue oh, no. where I can't actually hear anything that Amy is saying at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I just thought you were being uncharacteristically quiet. Uh, <laughs> Jack's, Jack's asking you about... Um, oh, no, um, I heard your, a very your... vague broken <laughs> bit there. Um, give me a second. I'm going to try and disconnect from the call and reconnect. Uh, we'll see if that no. helps out. Hmm. Ah, technical issues. Gremlins. Boy of Boys. Gremlins. <laughs> Such is the way of things. Most stream is complete without at least one major hiccup. I thought it, I thought it was me that had froze and everybody was just like still moving and I was like, please tell me. No, I'm not I frozen. could hear you. I could hear you. <laughs> oh, I can hear you. There's always something. I can I can hear you now, Amy. Hurry! Yay! There we go. Jack Jack was enthusiastically asking about your adventures during your loop and um, if you'd fought any monsters. Oh, uh, no, my loop was very uneventful. I think might be the the polite way to put it. Um, I actually mm -hmm. got through it in a couple of days. Didn't really see anything too exciting. 
days. A couple of days? We must yeah. have put on ahead of speed. We've been positively dawdling by comparison. <laughs> oh, you know, I think it was just uh, beginner's luck. Mm. Right. No, I don't suppose... I that piece of information away. I don't suppose you were, saw anything on, on your loop that made you... Well, I don't want to question... It, it's hard to put it into words, but anything that made you wonder about Armand and his purpose? Did you learn anything to that extent whilst uh, travelling? Hmm. Mm, not, that, not that I can think of. I mean, I've always had a lot of faith in the teachings of Armand, uh, but... No, as as far as I've seen, everything seems relatively okay out in the world. Mm. Why? Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing. Just wondering about your loop, really. It's just you were supposed to take in everything around us, and I wondered if you might have had some revelations. Being a paladin, of course, I consider these things at length, and, mm. well, nothing more than that. And he looks around at the other two, kind of, like, slightly side-eyeing, like, I, I didn't Jack get anything away, right? Jack has complete poker face. <laughs> Jack has complete poker face. He's just smiling really brightly. And he's just like, this guy doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. Oh, no. See how long that lasts. <laughs> Hang around with us. Something's going to happen. <laughs> Some weird shit's going to happen. <laughs> I, think, I think we should just wait until something happens. Because Jack's in agreement with this. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to believe us anyway. Yep, you got to see it to believe it. We've communicated I mean, all of this with a series of looks and narrowing of yeah. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's playing it out in chess moves with his chess set. He's just like <laughs> moving pieces sort of way, like to spell out some code. <laughs> It's fine. I'm happily eating my the breakfast. Board. <laughs> Rearranging the board between toast. Okay. If you wish to check for wounded, the tavern keeper here is a good source of information in the village. They probably have an idea of roughly how many wounded and where they are at the moment. An excellent idea. I'll go and ask him just now. And uh, Malik Sire gives you a wee nod and gets up and heads over to speak to the uh, the tavern owner. Okay. Jack's gonna like slide, slide, slide along the table and be like, uh, "What about Timidar? What are we gonna do about him? Are we gonna go look for him, or?" Well, he seemed like he had a plan of sorts, and well, I don't want to badmouth the guy, but he didn't seem to want to actually go anywhere or do anything a lot of the time. Timidar's plan is to sleep all day. That is Timidar's plan. And Timidar's probably going to get eaten by a bear. Well, if, okay, we... but if he's got this much of a head start on the way back to Sparrows, I'm not convinced mm. that we'll catch him. Mm. Especially as he could use magic to, to speed his way. I have every faith that he could take care of himself. And well, we, we do have a, our duties here. He might have uh, jumped ship and derelicted on his, but I would certainly feel amiss if I did. But he's our friend. He's not someone that takes stupid risks. I'm sure he'll be fine. All right. This Malixar chap seems nice enough, I and mean, we'll see how our fortunes go with him. Well, uh, well if, at the very least, we, he may be able to investigate and find out something about this roundhouse we may have missed. B before leaving town, it would be good to know what happened. I would like to get back Kuji? in that tunnel. No, no, definitely not. Nothing about Kuji, nothing about the purple light. But he's going to well, ask why she's following us. If anything becomes relevant while investigating, then I suppose we may have to fess up at that point, but for now, discretion is probably the best best path forward. Yeah, it's probably We're best she stays in the tavern. Kuji is 
Kuji was looking for a group to join because they were travelling and they didn't want to journey alone. Yes. Okay. And don't worry, so like I won't make you lie. I will do it for you. Much appreciated. We got it, buddy. We got it. Okay. While you're having this worried and somewhat concerned conversation, um, Malixai um, approaches Lord behind the bar. I'm not sure. It's not clear where uh, where his father immediately is, but he he can maybe answer your questions. Yes, I mean that would that would be a great start. Um, I was just wondering if you could tell me. Uh, I've literally just been shipped into town to uh, give some assistance. Uh, where would I be best placed to go to help? Oh, I'm not. I'm not really sure where we need some assistance. What sort of assistance were you having in mind? Um. Well, uh, I'm a healer. Uh, I have a little bit of magic. If there's anything that I could do that might be able to. You know, assist with the the lives of the faithful. That'd be great. Hmm. Well, normally I'd uh, tell you to go and uh, go and have a chat with uh, with your own Valizim, but as as you may have seen on your uh, on on your way in, if you only arrived this morning, there seems to have been some sort of uh, some some sort of issue overnight, and the roundhouse has burned down. So I don't know where Valizim is. I would book out looking to see if there's anything afoot, but in their absence, I mean, your uh, your next point of reference is going to be what's nearest, Riverford. Hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. I'll see if there's uh, anything that I can do out in Riverford. Thank you very much for your time. No trouble at all, sir. Yeah, uh, so I guess Malixar will kind of have a look around, see if I can catch the eye of those uh, those three other guys that we're just talking to and see if they know where Riverford is. Um, Silic so kind of catches the eye and oh, oh, steps over towards the bar um, where he's been inquiring. Oh, how can, can I help? Uh, well, that depends. Do you know where Riverford is? Well, no, not particularly. We're not really that familiar with the area being on the the uh, loop and all. Hmm. But I, I'm sure somebody around here will be able to give us a hand. Local merchant or some such. Um, so, some recollection <laughs> issues, which is uh, inevitable. Uh... had a horrible feeling that was going yep. to be the case. Yes, uh, we passed a sign and yep. we took the one for Greydale rather than the one for Riverfront. Let's take that again, then, shall we? I suppose. Yeah. Um, and uh, and also from Malixire, who has literally come in from Riverford, which is oh. where, which, which is which is where uh, where yes. where his overnight journey began after being deposited there by, by via the gate. By the gate, yep. All right, then. In that case, I know exactly where I'm going. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Aria is going to wander over and go. That doesn't seem to have been as helpful as I'd hoped. Mm. Not particularly, but what can you do? Um, it does suggest that they're they haven't found anyone injured in the explosion. Yeah. Um, certainly, we didn't come across last night. We didn't come across anyone, um, like who had been in the building. So hopefully it would only be um, some very minor burns from like trying to put the fire out. It might be best to have a look at, well, what remains of the roundhouse. See if there's any explanation there. Hmm. I mean, it would be good to get an explanation as to why a seemingly empty building exploded on its own. Yeah. If it was empty, mm. as far as I'm aware, nobody has seen Valisin. Mm. And mm. 
there's been no talk of a body having been found. Mm. So we just don't know where they are at the moment. Then it would make sense that going to have a look at the 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 uh, the roundhouse and see exactly, well, see what we can see. Well, we will. We would be happy to assist you in this. Oh, that would be very kind of you. Shall we? Yes. Yes, let's. I imagine Jack is like hurriedly finishing his breakfast. <laughs> It's like all the food oh, wolf before. <laughs> wolf and all the food down, packing his bag with apples, just like <laughs> snacks for the Lord, road. Lord, Lord sees you uh, sees you making uh, making to make a move, and uh, and just says, "Do your friend not joining you for breakfast today?" Then it appears. No, not today. Um, I'm not entirely sure of what he's up to, but uh, I'm sure it won't be a problem. Very good. Turn to leave, think, and Arya just thinks to herself, didn't, didn't that sound really dodgy? Why does he just accept it? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. Equally, Silic's thinking about the fact that we've been barred into our rooms at night. So somebody being missing, like, they're going to take note of that, 100%. Yeah. He's probably going to go upstairs the second we're out of here to go and have a look and see. He might, or he might just assume that he left in between the doors being unlocked. Depends on how closely he was keeping tabs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Still feels creepy that we get locked in overnight. Uh, they had a reasonable reason, ultimately, being pulled into people's well, not people's memories, but general memories trapped in the area. It's a bit creepy. Hmm. Anyway, don't, we don't should probably to... make. Sorry, Dragon. Don't forget just... as well that because of the overnight restrictions. You were the only people who attended the roundhouse. Were we? Yep. Nobody else was there. That is weird. Hmm. Well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Yeah, let's. I wonder if any of the villagers have gone to have a look. Hmm. This is a, this village does feel strange, but as it's daylight, we best get on. They don't like people being out after dark. Hmm. I'll bear that in mind. Yeah, it's a whole thing. We've been locked in our rooms overnight for the past wee while. It's been a bit weird. Hmm. All right. Yes, they have their ways around here, but, <laughs> well, it is what it is. We've 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 made good with it. Okay, so you go out into the, uh, towards the, towards the square. Um, you can see that there are a couple of the local labourers um, who have grabbed out some extremely big brushes and are trying to shift the debris that's scattered across the market square. They don't seem to be overly interested in it. It's just in the way of having a nice, tidy market square. So they're just pushing it back the way it came from. Within the debris, is it kind of brickwork or is there more, are there books? Is there anything of interest that could be spotted within it? Um, there's nothing that looks particularly interesting. There might be some fragments of paper. Um, there'd be, you know, it's, it's largely charred timbers. Um, you didn't spot anything last night when you were looking at it that's indicated there was a, any significant source of books or anything like that. 
Um, it's there's there's fragments of magical material, um, which you were able to to see. There was quite a lot of uh, when you were looking at it last night. Um, and other than that, it's all fairly mundane stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a a bit a bit of broken shard furniture, the timbers of the building where uh, where where they've been ejected at the explosion. Um, you do notice as you get closer to it that by now the smell of sulfur has faded. Is there any more commotion beyond the people, and I say commotion, like the people sweeping up, do they seem concerned about this, or is it that they're being dutiful about this, and is there anybody else kind of crowded around wondering what's happened kind of thing? Um, the the labourers just seem to be doing what's necessary to uh, to keep, keep things ticking along. Um, you do notice uh, the old book. The innkeeper is uh, is stood looking at it with his uh, with with a, his hand sort of stroking his chin in thought. There isn't really anybody else paying attention to it. It's not, and it's not a focal point for the for the villagers. They're just getting on with their days. That is so weird. Mm-hmm. There's not even kids playing in it or in, or like mucking about with the ashes and stuff like that or they just seem to be acting like it didn't happen or that it doesn't matter mm. or if it doesn't exist. Mm. Yeah, this place gets stranger and stranger. Good people around here so it's very odd ways about them. Uh, I will take the chance to introduce myself to the innkeeper. Um, I'll explain to him that I've been sent to uh, assist in any way that I can, since he appears to be overseeing the operation, but at the very least is standing there doing nothing, so I can maybe try and shame him into helping. Yeah, so he uh, he acknowledges you as you approach. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of an odd one. Well, there was a perfectly good building here last night. Now all there is is a big pile of nonsense. Where's yeah. Valley's in when you need him? Yeah, we've been asking that ourselves. Um, so there's no, no hint as to what could have happened? It was here last night. It's not here this morning. I assume... Uh, I I assume something uh, something that they were up to got uh, got the better of them, but I have no idea what it was. Something All they were up odd. to. What sort of things did they get up to in the the roundhouse? I have no idea whatsoever. It's uh, it's restricted property, isn't it? The only hmm. thing you're allowed to know about uh, about the goings on of a roundhouse is that. If you go in the roundhouse, you're there to talk to uh, talk to your representative, and if they're not there, you don't go in. Yeah. Private property is uh, is the roundhouse here in every other village. I see. Yeah. Restrictions obviously aren't going to apply to uh, to user that or to these good folk. You uh, you're involved involved in the circle's business and. Uh, and there's none of us here that'll say boo to that. Hmm. All right. Um, okay. So, as far as you're aware, then uh, there's been no injuries, or the only person there's only seems to be one person missing at the moment. No one else has been reported missing, or no, no. all all that's unaccounted for is Valizem, and uh, and no nobody saw or did anything overnight that would. Uh, that would provoke them to be uh, in need of any sort of attention. You know, we don't go out after nightfall. Yes, I had been hearing something about that. Um, hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. 
No bother at all. Yeah, I I think you guys are right. There's something weird going on, right? We we could see the explosion from our window hmm. in the tavern. And we came over to help. It was an explosion with fire. We came over to to help put the fire out because that's what you do when a wooden building surrounded by other wooden buildings goes on fire. Yes, correct. Um, but we've experienced something of the thing that makes them stay in at night in this village. Mm-hmm. And it is something that that the sound of an explosion could be very similar to. So mm-hmm. I'm not entirely surprised that nobody even looked out to see what was going on. Well, yeah, but you would expect that once, you know, once people got out for their morning and saw that there was an entire building missing, that they might have, there might have been some chatter about it or... I think there would be if it had been any building other than the roundhouse. Mm. I think that's the difference. Um, Valison was very closed mouth. They didn't, they didn't discuss very much openly. Um, certainly not with, not particularly with us, and certainly not with the villagers. Yeah. Um, there was a smell of sulphur last night that I noticed has completely gone. Um, and we know that Valison could use uh, reasonably powerful uh, transportation circles. Huh. Um, they seemed really competent. It's difficult to think that this was a this was magic gone wrong, but it I suppose it's always possible. But. I suspect we might need to we might need to go through like the footprint of what was the building and see if we can find a body. Mm. Yeah, I think that may be for the best. Um Yeah. I might even ask the uh the two gentlemen who are sweeping at the moment if they can give us a hand. Uh, we're, I'll explain to them that we're going to pick through the uh, the remnants of the building, uh, see if we can't confirm or deny uh, that there's anyone in there. Okay. Well, that would bring us up to four six of us. Seven? Seven of us doing it if both of them agree to help. That shouldn't take... Um, you don't want to move quickly, but no, you but should... do need to get on with it. Yeah. yeah. My guy's pretty strong as well, so if there's anything particularly big and hefty, then he can go to work on that. I think we I think we start moving charred wood to see if there's any charred bone. Heave ho. <laughs> oh, poor Jack. <laughs> oh, come on. An, an honest day's work. <laughs> I, I have a plus one <laughs> to my strength. So do I. I. I have, I have, I have a very small, small gnome. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I have a minus one to my strength. So Oof. <laughs> okay. Oof. There's a reason I'm asking for help. Like... 
Oh no, Jack's all up for helping. Yeah. He's just not sure how effective <laughs> he'll be. Jack, <laughs> yeah, how long could you work together? Yes, we'll get the small pieces. <laughs> I've got visions of Silic picking up something pretty bloody heavy with my plus three over here. <laughs> and just passing it <laughs> off to somebody who just slumps to the ground immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I am mostly looking at this as an investigation rather than strength. Mm. <laughs> um, I mean, that's so, definitely my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, la the labourers, when asked, are happy to help, provided that you'll then give them a hand clearing the square, because they don't want to be behind on their work. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. That's fair. And that's turn fair. for another. Um, mm -hmm. And those of you who were on the scene last night, um, as you start pitching through, will will see things that you recognise from pitching through it last night uh, by magical light. Um, there's not a vast amount of identifiable debris. Um, there's a scorch trail between what was the storeroom and the teleportation circle, uh, mm -hmm. which Malaxai you will recognise as a gate similar to the one that brought you to Riverford. Um, and beside the uh, teleportation circle, um, where you put it back last night, is the is a charred arm. That you weren't able to identify. Timida, you may recall, thinks that that's a decoy. Of course. Um. Can we, in better light now, um, tell whether. Can we get any further to establishing whether or not this arm belongs to Valison? Um, you think it's fairly unlikely. Um, in the morning light, you can see that um, there's very little that suggests that this arm belonged at any point to Valizim, uh, mainly because you met Valizim. They are mm -hmm. a female elf, or a female presenting elf. And this is definitely not an elf arm. Okay. This, you would possibly venture so far as to say, might even be a troll arm. Ooh. Oh. And trolls are not known in this part of the world. Um, hmm. is, is this arm... Is this arm close to any of the other things that were in the basement of the roundhouse? It's beside the uh, wall between the uh, workroom where the teleportation circle was and the storeroom. Okay. So this could be a, like a magical reagent or something similar? Possibly, but I've never heard of one that includes a troll arm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Like you, you take little shavings of it as you go. Uh, you use them for you know, healing potions, things like that. I've, I've, I've heard it used before. Hmm. Very practical. Hmm. The advantage of a troll arm, of course, is that it has limited ability to regenerate. Hmm. Well, you don't have coming to, back. Yep, you don't have to keep buying reagents. Well, unless it's recently been in an explosion, I suppose. Mm. But wouldn't but we yeah. know if there was a troll? Again, Can it may really manage to not notice a troll. It may not have been a whole troll. It may have just been an arm in a bag. Like you have to just keep shaving the bits off so it doesn't grow a whole troll. <laughs> Chat just makes a face and looks at Arya and just like <laughs> they had it pieces maybe gross I'm not sure how much I want to pick through the rest of this 
Yeah, I'm not going to touch anymore. We did. I'm just going to put down it very gently. There was a, a decent amount of magic of Arcana throughout the roundhouse. Um, I think the the strongest was the like the teleportation. Um, but there was definitely other things. Um. Anyway, we should we should continue. Um, and Aria is going to go over to roughly where she thinks the trapdoor to the tunnels would be and begins to clear that area. Yeah, so um, as you sort of saw overnight, um, the trapdoor has burnt away and it's, the entrance is clogged with debris from the storeroom. Um, we, you can certainly start to try and clear that away if you want to reveal the tunnel entrance. I think, I think we need to. Um, I okay. think we should clear it because if if something went wrong and Valison couldn't get out the door, they might have tried to go out through the tunnel. Okay. Assuming they knew the tunnels existed, but we should check anyway. That's fine. So. I will. I will continue doing that, um, and assume that everyone else is busy and not paying attention to the fact I'm digging a hole. Basically, yeah, we're just like yeah, shifting other bits of material about. Mm. Do, 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 do. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm looking at rocks, <laughs> rocks, pretty rocks. And You're looking for rocks. strange magical things. Or bits of elf. Or indeed Gross. strange magical things that are bits of elf. Gross. <laughs> so gross. I mean, her magic was good, so... Yeah, likewise, Silic is just picking up probably some of the more heavier things around him, trying to, like, create paths throughout what was like the the foundation like thinking about the shape of the building trying to clear past to maybe other rooms if there was any others yeah um so pretty much based on uh, based on your recollection um there was pretty much a a, a public facing bit at the front um and a small curtained area off to the side of it um which, based on the debris that you're uh, that you're shifting, looks like it was just a sleeping area. Um, and then behind that was the workroom with the teleportation circle in it and the storeroom, further back than that, built into uh, built into the hillside a little. Is there any kind of um, in the behind the curtain area, any kind of indication of personal belongings, that kind of stuff to rifle through, looking for maybe a diary or anything any anything of interest that might shed light on the life of uh, Valsin or uh, Valsin sorry yeah virtually everything is unrecognizable um poking around a little bit the one thing you do find is a uh, a circle insignia similar to the ones that you carry um but the space in which you find that is definitely not consistent with the body. Is it a done thing to not be carrying the symbol around? Or is that just whatever? Um, possessing the symbol means that you can call upon the assistance of other circle uh, agents of varying, uh, varying natures. Um, lacking it doesn't necessarily have any consequence uh, beyond that, and they're not something that is innately precious. You know, at, at some point, everybody will have had one of these in their possession. 
Um, it would not be particularly unusual for representatives of the circle at varying levels to have a supply of spares, even. You try, although although you you can you can recognise it, you can't necessarily validate what it might have been doing there. Okay. Well, he'll pick it up and bring it back out uh, to Malaxar. Uh, sorry, Malaxar, and um, pass it over and say, "Well, nothing much in the sleeping quarters. Just this uh, circle symbol. Pretty standard stuff." Uh. Yeah. Anybody, anybody found anything else? Um, not as far as I can tell. Although I think Aria is over there digging in a corner. Kind of looks up and kind of looks at you <laughs> and goes back to scrabbling. Oh yes, uh, nope. well, I suppose we'll leave her to it and. So looks a little bit awkward because he knows why she's <laughs> scrambling about in that corner. Um, oh, well, I wonder what might be un under this. And he kind of points in the opposite direction away from that just to draw attention. What kind of uh, experience yeah. have you got in uh, investigation? Uh, not a great deal. Uh, generally, I'm much more, uh, much more at home on the battlefield, but I figured I would try my hand. Well, certainly seems to be working out so far. Did a good job of uh, enlisting those guys. Hmm. Have hmm. I managed to find anything interesting or informative? No. All you found is uh, is bits of debris. You're managing to make some headway into it. Um because it wasn't a very big hole, really. Um, so it's not it's not that much debris by volume, and there's no way for the bigger bits to have gotten into it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm really regretting not taking some of the treasures out of the storeroom. Because I assume at this point they're all trash, completely. So yes. yeah, that, that's that's why there's lots of little bits of magic around the place. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am. It's such a waste. It <laughs> we didn't know it was gonna blow up. I know. <sighs> Nobody could predict no. the boom in the night. Well, certainly none of us could. Ah. Uh... Can I see into the tunnels underneath? Um, you can start to see um, into the void beneath. Um, it's obviously not particularly lit, other than with, okay. uh, with the light from around you. I am going to cast light on one of the bits of rubble that's still down there. Okay. Um, just to see if there's anything else down there that's not like just rubble that's fallen down. Uh, okay, um, that's fine. You get some uh, some ability to see around the uh, bottom of the uh, little tunnel there. There's nothing you can see that looks particularly interesting. Um, you know, it doesn't look like, for example. Uh, someone managed to get into the tunnel and then was immediately hit by debris. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But you you can only really see perhaps a foot aside okay. of the tunnel uh, entrance itself. Okay, that's fair. I assume if Allison was trapped down there, they would, you know, make some sort of noise to you would expect, so. signal us. So. <laughs> You'd hope so. I know. Okay, so I shall allow the cantrip to fade out and go back over towards the others, mm -hmm. I guess. Kind of like try and catch Silic, Jack and Coochie's eye and just be like, no, nothing. 
So like gives you a little nod and uh continues to rifle through things in the in the vague hopes of finding something more. Maybe the rest of that troll. There's a little bit of him that's kind of like, well, there could be a regenerating troll somewhere under all this rubble. We'd have to deal with that. Um, a nice, easy problem to deal with. It, do, it doesn't look, in fairness, like there's, uh, there's a great deal of opportunity for anything else to be hiding in uh, any part of the debris. Um, so, unless there's anything specific that you want to look for in here, um, it's probably time for you to fulfil the labourer's request for assistance and then compare notes on what you think you're going to do next. And I'm going to leave you to do that for a moment while I take a moment's break. Okie doke. Well, we'll get to sweeping. Yep. <laughs> Didn't take us too long, in fairness. No. Yeah, I think Silic would be pretty dutiful because he's happy to return the favour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll just help them best they can. Running yep. little barrels. <laughs> barrows, even. Not barrels. Barrows. So if there's absolutely nothing that we can find in the uh, in this burnout building, did someone grab a hold of that troll arm? Are we taking that with us? Are we just leaving it in the pile? Hmm, that's a good um, question. Do you can have it, any do... need of it? I mean, yeah. no, but you kind of don't want to leave it unattended. Some that's, good troll arm right there. Like, that, <laughs> maybe that, we, that's how you we get take ants. it with us? Like, yeah, why not? I'll I'll sure. stick it in my bag and try and remember to, like, you know, just occasionally burn the end of it to make sure that I don't end up with a bag full of troll. But what do we do it's now? Grew, it's grew three inches. <laughs> Yeah, what do we do now? Hmm. Um, it doesn't... It's looking like Valison wasn't in the roundhouse. But we can't confirm it. I know. Well, we should I mean, probably... The last, the last we knew, they were in the roundhouse. But they could easily have left without coming outside. I mean, there was a gate in there, right? This is true. They could easily have teleported away. Hmm. Which begs the question where they would teleport to. Well, I suggest that we uh, travel to the next Circle member. And pass on the information of what's happened here. Perhaps it might be a known quantity. They may, they may have information themselves. There... We did find uh, a couple of old tunnels underneath the village, but it uh, they they looked pretty much unused, and um, like they hadn't been touched in decades. Mm. And certainly, I found a, an opening to one of them, but there was no sign of any person there. Um, just more debris. Okay. So I don't... Yeah, I was just going to say, I think then our best bet is to uh, speak to whoever the nearest uh, circle member is and see if there's uh, anything more that we can do, really. That will be Riverford. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I've literally just uh, just arrived from there, but that's fine. I'm happy to take another trip back. Oh. Well, it, well, we, well, the, we, you're returning with more knowledge than they had to begin with. So we know that you now know that it was an actual explosion. Mm -hmm. That the wooden roundhouse was burned, was shattered into pieces and then burned. That there was a smell mm -hmm. of sulfur. And that there's no sign of the circle representative. Hmm. That's a good <sighs> amount of information for a morning. I suppose. Better than nothing. Well, lead the way. Yeah. Oh, 
off to Riverford then. Yeah, we'll make sure we've got, you know, uh, go by the end. Make sure. Yeah, go by the end. Get some food, supplies. Okay. Um. So, in the inn, um, it's old book behind the bar again, rather than Lord. I, just acknowledges you. Uh, and she after. Uh, it's beginning to look like it's time for us to, well, potentially move on. At the very least, report the roundhouse back to Riverford. And uh, we might be back, we might not. Aye, very well. Are you wanting me to keep this room on 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 account for you for a few days? I can do that for a wee bit of time. Oh, uh, yes, yes, that sounds good. Aye, no um, trouble. Is uh, in, I haven't, I didn't see your friend for breakfast or uh, or when when you came out to the roundhouse site. So, is he uh, is he gone or? Uh, he seems to have gone off on his own. So, um, uh -huh. uh, not entirely well sure. Him. I, I'm sure he'll be fine. So, go upstairs, gather our stuff. Um, while we're doing that, does Aria have a chance to slip off on her own to speak to Balioth's opener? Um, I'm sure you can find a way to make an excuse to do so. Okay. Um, um, and it's not like you don't know you can get out of the window if you want to. This is true. <laughs> I've climbed out of the window, I've climbed up onto the roof. <laughs> okay. So, Arya... She just needs five minutes, peace. Just cause we are... looks around, it's a bit shifty. Digs out Balioth's opener. I'm like, hello, opener. Yes. We have a new companion, and the circle representative in this village is missing. Their house blew up. Yes. Are you aware of any information connected to that? I am aware that the house blew up. Do you know where the elf is? I do not keep track of elves. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Um... We weren't able to find anything else at the observatory. Um, other than the fact that there were tunnels leading there. We're going next to Riverford. Um, I don't think that was marked on the map from the other side of the Vale. You are correct. Thank you, Opener. You are always very helpful. I may or may not be able to check in. Um, it depends on this new companion. They are... I think they might find it difficult to believe many of the things that we have seen. They will have the comfort of your friend who thinks I am nothing more than dinnerware. He is gone. He is run off somewhere. This is unexpected. I hope this won't be a problem in whatever it is we're being led to do. Nothing is certain. Oh, okay. Other than taxes. Oh, 
Opener, did you just make a joke? Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um I I don't know what to say at this point. So um bye for now and I'll speak to you later. Very well. I wrap Balios opener back up and place back in my bags and I'm quite confused. Possibly more confused after speaking to the opener than the worst before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to say. Um, That's acceptable. How fortunate. The other thing you should determine before you set out is who is taking the wand or whether you're leaving it with Kuji to take care of. So if no Did use to me... It? Do we just stash it for now? Um, if if nobody else wants to hold it, I guess my character can, but then he's not magical. I have a little magic. I can probably take it. I can. I'll keep it with me. Oh, if only you knew someone who was a spellcaster. <laughs> oh, we don't trust. Here's them. this weird <laughs> magical wand we found that might not actually be from this realm. Oh, and yeah. the people that we got it from say that Armand is a false god. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. We don't that doesn't give it sound to like you. an initial <laughs> explanation. Hmm. Yeah. Let us tell you the origins of this magical creation. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can decide if you want to court death. <laughs> Fine. Okay, I will keep it on me just now, and we shall assess um, our new companion. Yes, uh. that. We'll okay. see what might happen. You might get in at the we'll deep end. We'll maybe reward him once off. his eyes are opened. Yeah, <laughs> see if one of those dreams happens or something. And, and, <laughs> oh, God, and then yeah. we can be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's happened before. Oh, oh yeah. I feel like the mean. I kind of hope that it's only like purple light. That that's at least a much less traumatic and intimidating. Yeah, <laughs> intimidating. Yeah. Okay, gathered all of our stuff. I will keep guard of the wand. Okay. If Kuji has all of her stuff, then I guess we. Make sure we have supplies and set out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know from uh, from your previous travel, uh, and Malipsai knows very well recently, uh, the Riverford is about four or five hours away. Um, you're retracing your steps a little bit and then taking a, a different uh, route at one of the forts. Mm -hmm. um, it does take you a little bit the wrong way for Sparis but in the circumstances it's not an unreasonable thing to do um, it would be at least another day to get to the next settlement in the other direction so Riverford is yeah. your fastest way to get to, get to uh, a circle representative Well, I suppose a loop is never a, a like a journey in a straight line, so yes, we should get to know these lands and their people and their unusual ways. Who knows what and the next village might to... hold, and they should get to know us too with their friendly um circle reps who are supposed to do good things and help them out and live their lives. Just like ordinary people. I mean, they will. They must all have done their loops as well. Yep. I suppose. 
Now, I used to know a proverb about a loop not being a straight line, but for the life of me, I've lost it. <laughs> You'll remember as soon as we finish. Mm -hmm. Then the tip of your tongue. Okay. So the road, the road to Riverford is pretty uneventful. Um, you recognise a lot of the uh, the terrain that you pass through uh, from your arrival into Greydale. Um, it's um, a little distance back up to um, back up to the fork in the road and then uh and then you're heading back south down to the riverford okay um which you reach with very little uh very, very little difficulty and it's it's not eventful in any way uh it's okay. a good it's a good opportunity to really try and decompress from the weird events of that you've seen in Greydale, uh, and also to give you the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit better um, with my life sign you in the group. Um, it remains to be seen whether he'll be as keen on singing songs as uh, as Timida was. <laughs> Jack, 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 I mean, is, I, uh, I... Jack has taken the wrong moment to take a break for there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do know plenty of songs, but I guess most of them are hymns. I don't that that might work with the paladin. Time. Yeah, like there's definitely a couple that have got a good rhythm to to them, you know. So as we as we travel, um, Aria is going to be keeping an eye out to see if there's any of the natural things that don't quite seem right. Okay. Um. I'm going to assume not much jumps out at Nothing her. Nothing at all. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. And it's all different places that it seems to flare up. In a similar kind of vein, Silic is using survival skills to pick up any kind of like useful plants, things that might just taste good, like herbs and what have you. Yep. From the undergrowth and oh, nature's bounty, and kind of enjoying just being on the walk. <laughs> Jack is doing his customary teaching, uh, Mal Malakazar. I can't, bleh, I can't, I can't do it. Oh, my brain is fried. Um, Let's call me Mal. Mal, we're calling you Mal. <laughs> we're teaching you, um, some of the ballad songs that uh, he was teaching Timidar in the previous <laughs> season. So we're singing and I'm teaching you some verses. Okay. I'm more than fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so perfect because as you when you walked away, that's kind of what was being suggested as might be happening. <laughs> and yep. you've come back yeah. And said, oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Tell typical Jack. <laughs> Just um cheerful, happy, go lucky, enjoying meeting new people and Traveling about with his pals. <laughs> We're on adventures. It's awesome. It's a bit weird at the moment, but it's fine. Okay. Um, so yes, there's not nothing nothing weird to uh to make Aria concerned. There's plenty of little hedgerow snackettes for Silic. Um and uh, Certainly, plenty of ballads to be uh, to be passing on. Um, a few hours of walking gets you uh, gets you to the edge of Riverford. Um, it's it's another fairly unassuming uh, small village. Um, appropriately enough, it is on the bank of the river. Uh, it does look like there is actually a ford. Um, although you would be easier using the bridge nowadays. Um, it sort of resembles uh, the other villages you've seen um, in 
in its layout. There's something that's fairly evidently an inn. There's, uh, there is, of course, the roundhouse uh, and a, a scattering of other buildings around the place. Um, it's not obvious by by looking exactly what it is that uh, the, the villagers generally do around here. Um, you can make some educated guesses based on it being on a riverbank, but there's nothing, there's nothing visible that would give you an additional clue. Is there any building that stands out as a likely circle? Like yes. location, you can you can see the roundhouse. It's the only round yeah. building. Let's let's wander straight over to that. Okay. Door stands slightly ajar. Gonna look at our new companion, Mal. As the well, you spoke to them last, so yep, might as well. Uh, then I will. Curtly knock on the door a big and walk straight in. Okay. Um Jack follows with his customary Hello <laughs> Standard Jack. It's gonna get you stabbed Standard one of these Jack. days. <laughs> oh no, he'll do always to the circle because he's expected to Yep. Uh behind the uh, behind the desk in the roundhouse stands uh a uh, it's a bit it's a bit odd to uh, odd to describe they're, I, they're either very unfortunately scaly or they uh, or, or they are um, a half lizard folk without asking uh, we... personal questions you probably can't tell which but you should probably assume that it's not contagious we don't judge around here it's fine um they look up and uh, and acknowledge Malik Sire, uh with a nod. Um, this is indeed the uh, the per the representative that you uh, the that landed you in the gate this morning. Ah, uh, then I will report what we found. What small amount we found out with regards to the uh, the explosion of the other roundhouse. Uh, that there is currently no casualties. Uh, there is one missing person. Hmm. Very well. Is is it is it Valisin that is missing? Yes, the uh, the circle representative. Hmm. Yes. That is unfortunate. Hmm. She will be. A great loss if if she is not uh, if she is not found. Um, we were kind of working on the idea that she may have uh, used the gate in the roundhouse uh, before the explosion. Uh, she didn't pass through here, or we haven't seen them or heard anything about where they may have went. Oh no, the the dates are. Tied only to spirits. If if she used the date, then she is in spirits. But as you were dispatched from spirits mm. via the dates, and nobody clearly had seen Valley Sin come through, otherwise there would not have been a question of what had occurred in Greydale. Mm. Excuse me. Hello, Circle representative. I am yes. Ari A. Ah, um, you, please, we... please, please call me call me Blaze. It is, after all, my name. <laughs> Certainly. We. It appears that we were the only. We were the first people on the scene following the explosion in Greydale. Um, there was an explosion, and. Some of the remaining wood uh, was on fire, um, but we cannot say for certain whether Valison was even in the roundhouse at the time. I see. Um, they were often away doing 
research of some kind. Um, some of it into the somewhat peculiar history um, of the area around Greydale. So it is possible that they are somewhere else um, and are unaware of quite how much concern there is or about her whereabouts. Yes. Valley Sim is a noted researcher in her field. But it is certainly somewhat unusual for her to vanish completely like this in the circumstances. But you were you were the first you were the first on the scene. Oh, of course, Greydale, they they do not they do not leave the house at night. I recall. Yes. yes apart from apart from clearly yourselves and your your erstwhile companion, I believe, came through here three, four hours ago. Great rush. Huh? Oh. oh. Certainly I'm yeah. relieved to know that he got here safely. Um. Yes, it was quite unusual because he, he appeared and he, he demanded, demanded no less, quite in truth, to have, uh, to have a passage to Speris, which is... Which is not what you what you are expected to do if you are as he is and you are still on your loop. It is a short cut. You will I can only apologize on his behalf. No, 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 no. You do not apologize on behalf of another. It is his cross to bear and his burden to resume his loop from Greydale in the future. But Sperry's concurred that he should step aside from the from the passage for the time being he had he had perhaps information, he purported to have information that might be of use and of relevance in regards to the explosion and there's no other way that he could have had information but for being in Greydale last night. So it is, it is advantageous that I am able to pass word that we have an understanding of where he came from and why he was here. He was... Not as forthcoming with me as I might have liked, but perhaps more forthcoming once he was safely in Speris. Perhaps. Yes, that sounds like our Timidar. Yes. <laughs> For the time being, Mark Sire, I have been requested to provide you with all necessary assistance in ensuring you have everything you require to replace their Estfile companion. Mm. It is considered unacceptable that they should be reduced in their capabilities this group has been very prolific in their assistance of others to date. And it is therefore felt that it would be best for them to continue as is, which means they need a fourth. Yeah, I'm more than happy to lend my assistance any way I can. It is done, then. 
please feel free to ask of anything you require, both while you are here and before you depart, Riverford. Mm. As I said, I suppose you uh, know of a nearby bathhouse. Been on that road for well, me for literal hours over the course of today. I'm dusty, I smell. I can do with a wash. As long as you are downstream of the village, the river is yours. Hmm. Yeah, that would be a good start. Thank you. Very well. If there are no other immediate questions, I have much paperwork all of a sudden to attend to. <laughs> of course. Uh, if we need anything, then we will be in touch. As always, the roundhouses are a point of contact for you all. Thank you for all of your help. It is my pleasure and the blessing the of, of the Armand night. upon you. And upon you. Desperately shuffles the rest of them out before they say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Once we're outside. Well, it's... I'm... I'm quite happy to know that our helping out turnip farms appears to have become prolific hmm well it's, yes we're gathering a reputation of sorts all good it seems <laughs> two turnip farms and a well <laughs> ah reputation fine a good reputation can cover up many mistakes hmm. misunderstandings hmm well, let's hope we shouldn't have to uh, leverage that at any point. <laughs> no, no. It does feel like it's been very eventful so far. What say we ha all have a soak, then? I don't know about you guys, but that the sound of that bath was good. <laughs> yeah. It's a good plan. Okay. You easily find a convenient place downstream of the village. Choose you will happily stay on the bank and mind the uh, mind the deer. Ariel so. goes in for a quick dip and then is like this is a little bit chilly for me. Cedric's <laughs> <laughs> loving it. He he just he he's obviously in his element and yeah, he's just swimming about and having a good time. Jack's gonna have a quick scrub and just a thorough clean. Just wrap up warm and sit and chat. <laughs> Yeah, and Malexide is going to very carefully fold his clothes and get them off to one side, and then get himself into the stream and begin methodically kind of rinsing the uh, the dust of the road off himself. Uh, although he does turn to his new companions and says, So, turnip farms, you say? <laughs> yeah, so, uh... It was from day one. Hmm. It was a funny old thing. There was this fear of a turnip monster, and well, didn't really come to come to anything. But there was certainly a mystery afoot: disappearing turnips and whatnot. Interesting. Yes, instead of instead of a scare crow, they had uh, features to. prevent the great turnip monster from stealing their entire crop 
and yeah. uh, it was a little odd. Uh, and then we had, we came across some fish that instead of the normal colours were completely white. We still have no idea why. Uh, and then when we got to Greydale, there was issues with another turnip farm. Uh, thankfully, Kuji was of great help. Um, there was a there was some sort of pest eating the turnips, but it was incredibly fast, which is why no one had realised what it was before. Well, not fast enough, ultimately. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, we caught it. We did. Pests need to eat, but at the same time, they can easily destroy someone's entire crop. And that is not sustainable for a farmer. No, but such challenges are sent by Armand to test us. Yes, quite. Did you face, uh, well, I suppose, in such a short journey around the, uh, the circle, or such a quick one, should I say, did you face many great adversities? Was there any any moment of crisis? Um, I mean, I lost a shoe. Oh, <laughs> really? Just just a shoe? Hmm. Still don't know where it is and what happened to it. But yeah, that was that was about it. Um, mm. I mainly stopped off in a few places, spoke to uh, the. The citizenry and yeah, that was that was about it. Why did everyone else have more exciting loops? Well, we're certainly seeing a lot of uh, events, shall we say? Hmm. Certainly, going to have a lot of stories when we get back. I suspect we might be having one of the more eventful loops. In fairness, it's been. Every couple of days, there seems to be a new mystery. Mm. Although, Valley Sin disappearing or possibly being blown up is certainly one of the most serious so far. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not one to question Armand's uh, grand plan or anything but yeah it definitely feels like I had it a bit easy on my loop well maybe there's a reason why you're with us now then perhaps all these mentions of Armand Aria is getting a little twitchy at this point <laughs> In a weird way, Silic is reassured by having somebody that's kind of seemingly equally dogmatic, and he's going to have somebody to talk to about the questions, should they have some experience that allows the, those kinds of conversations to happen. Whereas Arya is sitting there and is getting more strongly of the opinion that Balios is one of the true gods. <laughs> Chuck's down the middle. He's just like, ah, oh, it's another person. Oh, and they're helping. Great. Yay, it's all, all good. Right. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's suffering. Nobody's like, <laughs> like there's no war. We're sorting people's problems out. It's a bit of a mystery. He's having a great time. It's like the more help, the barrier. Life is very simple when you're Jack. Life is very simple when you're Jack. Okay. I'm simple so envious. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very young gnome. So having enjoyed your river scrub, um, it's getting towards early evening. Um, and you could see the inn uh, as you approach the village, so you know where that is.
Let's head on into the inn, I guess. Yep. Let's yes. go get some grub. Yeah, and then we can maybe make plans as to what we're going to do now that we've reported back. Um, yeah. Food first, though. That sounds good. Best plans are made over a full stomach. <laughs> Guaranteed. Okay. Um, the inn is called Pip's Rest. You can see... Uh, you see see a, a little sign hanging out front. Um, as you go in, um, you can see a pair of uh, a pair of Goliaths sat and uh, sat sat on one of the larger tables, uh, just having having a conversation, having a couple of drinks. Um, and you can see a uh, a male dwarf standing behind the bar, polishing a. Polishing a tankard as best he can with a bit of rag. He looks up as you uh, as you enter. Oh, there! Welcome, hey, travellers. Good day. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, we're travellers on the road, uh, looking for uh, some lodgings for the evening. The best place in town, and the only place in town. But who's counting? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess that works out for you. Well, have you got a room? Or potentially even two. I mean, we, I guess we could spread out. <laughs> I can, can do you one or two, whichever you prefer. Capacious enough for anyone's uh, anyone's likings, especially uh, you know, as as you'll see, we have uh, a reasonably varied clientele. Well, what do you think, guys? One room or uh, two? Yeah, we'll we'll take we'll take two. Give us a bit more room. Yeah, let's. We can spread out a little while we have the option. Who's bunking up with who then? Who well, do you think me? And you know, it would be nice to have a prayer body for tonight. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Jack, yeah. would you rather uh, stay up praying or getting extra sleep? <laughs> I'm going to turn in for the night. I've had a bath. I've had some good food. <laughs> I'm going to hit the sack. I don't think Jack cares which room he's in. It doesn't sound like it. I'm only little, I only need a little bed. I don't take much space. He's I'm in with Gucci and the I then. One. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to walk into the closest one <laughs> and find himself a spot. I think for the sake of peace, then, maybe we'll go off to the other room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you won't be able to pray if all you can hear is Jack snoring. <laughs> Very quietly. Uh, I mean, I've prayed through worse. It'll be fine. <laughs> Okay. Are you all turning in, or are some of you staying up for a little bit? We'll we'll do our little prayer circle thing, blessings yeah. of Amon and etc. Et <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I guess we'll turn in. Yeah. Aria might sit up a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, she's kind of mulling over in her head. How their next, like what their possible next steps could be, that also would give and from also be helpful for working out the correlation between the the map of this world and of Kuji's. So, they're probably awake a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's mostly, yeah. Thinking and trying to plan rather than doing much active. Okay. That seems reasonable to me. Um, well, that's probably a good place for us to leave it for this evening. Um, 
everyone can have a nice night's sleep and see what the morning brings. Assuming you get to sleep that long. But we'll find that out next time. <laughs> so, season two under our belts. Any final thoughts from our cast? I'm intrigued to see what happens when something inevitably spooky occurs, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're brought I mean, into the fold with us and Yeah. 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 <laughs> It'd be interesting. I think there to be some purple lights tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Some weird freaky dreams. Mm. Hopefully not another memory, because <laughs> oh God. it was weird. Hopefully they're not catching from Greydale. Aye. <laughs> it will certainly be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. Yes. It <laughs> okay. Dragon, would you care to wrap us up? So thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the start of season two of, of the Verlastin Circle. Um, our GM is Lunar Wolf. Um, he streams on an occasional basis. Uh, da, 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 I don't have my thing to copy. I am so disorganized. Apologies. Uh, so that is his channel now in chat. Um, it mostly uh, streams some Football Manager, uh, can vary. Um, also, you should go and check out Eden's channel. Uh, if I'm, I assume I'm going to be spelling correct. Yes, yes, I did. I'm doing well. Right. Um, you can tell so... you spelled that correctly because he was playing clone hero. <laughs> Indeed, of course. <laughs> One um, step closer to those hot pants every time, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a rough old time. <laughs> so you, can, you can find both of them also on um, Twitter with those uh, usernames. Uh, Jack is Amy, and you can find her as Meg the Pick. Malik Sire is uh, Ian, and you can find him under M Lurking on Twitter. Um, I'm there as Dragon PRPG, uh, but you'll most likely find me under the Penance account. Um, if you want to find out more about the sorts of things that we do, then you can come and have a look at penancerpg.com. Uh, we have some wonderful sponsors um, who have given us some discount codes. Uh, so uh, D and Dice um, is at .co.uk is a UK based. Um, they're now they now are actually a game shop, but they started off as a dice company. Um, and if you use Penance RPG, you get 10% off any purchase with them. Um, this includes a massive range of dice and some uh, dice trays and D&D products, all those sorts of things. Um, and if you are US-based, then we have a same discount code, Penance RPG. Works with Gemhammer Gaming and Sons. Um, that will get you 20% off. We also had an episode sponsor for our new episode that went live yesterday, um, which is a new app called Newsly, and they have the what they what their app does is it will take like any articles or like podcast episodes or programs about a topic you follow, and they will. If it's not an audio format, they will have it read, read aloud to you through the app. Um, and we have a code for a one month free premium subscription with them. Uh, the code is RPG. 
it's definitely worth checking out because it means that you could get all of your audio and non-audio uh, interest topic all in one place. Um, so it's really easy to just switch between um, all the different media that you're interested in. I think that's everything. Someone please shout at me if I've missed something. Um, we'd also like to thank World Anvil. Um, I use the World Anvil um, software to maintain the Velastin source material. Um, and we're still working on making some more, some of that publicly available. Uh, that's taken a long, a long time to come to fruition, unfortunately, but we're getting there. I need to chase up World Anvil as well. We should be able to, there should be a discount code for you all from them as well. I will have that in place soon. But yes, that is all for tonight. Um, the rest of this week, there will be uh, streams uh, by Nikolai. There will be some group streams going on later in the week. And then on Sunday, we should have another episode of our Homebrew Reimagined Dragon Age campaign, which is called Dark Tide, um, in which you can also see Amy. Yes. And me. And me. Apologies. <laughs> Okay, now I'm trying to find someone for us to stream to. And the problem is always that I have some things. I get different lists show up, whether I'm looking at my account or looking through the podcast account, which is massively helpful. Someone talk. Someone cover the fact that I'm really happy. <laughs> uh, well, then, I'll just say it has been uh, a pleasure joining uh, the cast. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how things develop and how things pan out as we go. Uh, and it was a great session. Yeah, good to play with you again. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so nice to play. <laughs> Finally. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have played. Um, yeah. We did the Lords of Rolocalypse. Rolocalypse. Yes, we did yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. We did yeah. a session. <laughs> I think a that's session. the first time in many years. Yes. Mm. I'm not going to say how many years because. <laughs> no. Know. We all feel no. old enough. It's fine. We all feel old enough. Yep. <laughs> 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 okay, so we are going to read into Lily Dreams On. They are a fantastic streamer. Uh, they are also Glasgow based and they are currently playing Escape the Ayuwaki. They play a lot of horror games, so this should be interesting. That will tick through and we'll see you again later. Bye. Okay, and we're out. And we're gone. There we go.